So in this case, I need us to consider a typical exam question on our transistor amplifiers as we managed to work on this. Uh, as an introduction, as we managed to work on each and every part that you need in your syllabus. So there we are given the following values of a voltage divider. They gave you uh, that it's a voltage divider, biased emitter, amplifier unknown. Sometimes you are not given that. So you will see that uh, for a fixed uh, common emitter where the, the, the resistance of the emitter is given and also the collector emitter, uh, the collector resistor that you're given, which is our capacitor uh, that we are given at the emitter is also involved. It is going to be difficult for you to notice like which part are you considering there unless you be given to calculate or maybe you are given the values of RB1 and RB2. These ones, we know that they are for the voltage divider. So in this case, it was an advantage that we are already told that this is for a voltage divider. But in other cases, you are the one who is supposed to uh, check with the information that you're given to say which uh, part are you going to consider. So not wasting much time as I listed all the formulas under our voltage division. Going to calculate RA, calculate each of the following. So remember that from our calculations, uh, even from our formula sheet, let me just bring you back to your formula sheet so that we can be together from what I explained before. Remember here, if you still remember this part here, is the one that we are actually going to be working with as you are dealing with our basic uh, transistors. And then for a voltage division, we are going to consider the part where we've got calculating RB1 and RB2. But for RC, uh, this part of RE, uh, the calculation of VE, uh, these beta, they are not going to change. Even the RC is the same. The only part that is going to change is your RB you are not going to have that as RB. So the formulas, guys, they are already there. So I'm not going to waste much time in this case. In order for us to have this, we can see that from RE, there is VE over IE, which is simply VE over IC. So meaning to say we can calculate this. And VE can be calculated from what? From VCC over 10. So with these two, we were able to calculate uh, the required value of the resistor RE that we are given there. So that is in this case here, we are going to have our RE from our calculation. We saw that this can be given as VE over IE, but IE, we know that this will be approximately equal to IC. So we just use this as IC. We have IC. In this case, this IC, we have it, but we do not have VE and VE can be calculated uh, from 1 over 10 of VCC, which is simply means uh, VCC over 10, where the VCC is given, uh, that is 1 over 10 times 14, and that was going to give us 1,4 volts. So with the VE, we're just going to substitute. So RE was going to be VE, which is 1,4 over IC, which is 12,5 times 10 to the exponent of minus 3. So that was going to give us uh, the value of RE, which is 112 ohms, just like that. So you can calculate this. So this was going to be 112 ohms. And we have our VE in case uh, that we we'll need this VE. We calculated this, remember, uh, that's 1,4 volts in that case. And another part, it was to calculate 3.12 CE. 3.12, again, we are given uh, the value. I mean, the formula that you're going to use to calculate your CE, uh, in this case, our CE is supposed to be equal to 10 over 2 pi F R E. So it was just a matter of substituting again into our formula. So that is 10 over 2 pi uh, F R E. So CE representing what? The emitter bypass uh, capacitor. So as we do understand capacitance, uh, in microfarads, we can simply convert this by multiplying uh, by 10 to the exponent of 6. This is converting directly our answer to microfarads, meaning to say whatever that you are going to have when you substitute here 10 uh, over 2 pi times the frequency, which is 60 hertz, 
times RAE. Remember, RAE, we calculated this. We got 112. Then we're going to multiply by 10 to the exponent of 6. The reason is that we can we are simply we simply need our answer to be directly in what micro farads converting to micro anything in micro just multiply by what 10 to the exponent of 6 so that is going to give us 236,838 micro farad just like that so that was uh, the capacitance uh, value on 3.12 then you're going to consider another part which was to calculate uh, RRC on 3.13. So to calculate RRC again, the formula is given. I think I showed you guys from your own formula sheet so that RRC can be calculated from what? Uh, VCC minus VCE, everything over IC. So in this case, we have to consider to say there is RRE. So this one cannot be uh, obtained because of what? Okay, this one is for the basic. We do not have uh, VE there. So you must consider this one where the VE is considered. Remember, this is for the voltage divider. So this is the one that you're going to use. Not this one. So this one was not going to be applicable. Uh, we're going to use this one uh, to calculate our RRC where VE is involved. That is the condition there. VE is supposed to be also included. So RRC was going to be calculated from VCC uh, minus VCE minus VE. Everything over IC as we saw from our formula and we've got uh, VCE, we've, uh, VCC, the VCE is given, the VE we calculated, the IC we are given. So in this case, everything is there on our formula. So we're just going to substitute our VCC, which is 14, uh, VCE, which is 7 minus VE, the one that we calculated, 1,4. Then we're going to divide to the current, which is 12,5 milliamps. Milliamps times 10 to the exponent of negative 3. So that's your collector resistance, which was going to give you 448 ohms, just like that. So you've got your uh, RRC. In case that you need this, you must remember your values. Uh, let's check another part, which is of RB1, uh, RB2. This is the part of our voltage division. Uh, this part of RB1 and RB2, they are for voltage division. And you're not supposed to worry, guys, in case that you have forgotten your formulas. You can see that we have got this. RB2 can be calculated from 1 over 10 times beta gain times RE. That is the condition of our RB2. So this can be calculated uh, 3.14. So our RB2 is simply going to be 1 over 10 times beta uh, RE. Our beta is there. Beta gain. RE. We calculated this RE, remember? So everything is there. So this was going to give us RB2, which is 1 over 10 times our beta gain of 350. Uh, the RRE that we calculated, this was 112. So this is going to give us uh, the resistance of uh, 3,920 ohms, which is uh, uh, equal to, if you divide by 1,000, that's 3.92 kilo ohms. You can write it like that. So that is how you can have the value of RRB2. So with this value of RB2 that we just calculated of 3,920 ohms, we are going to use it to calculate the value of RB1 as we uh, saw from our formula that RB1 includes or involves the RB2. As we are seeing here, we have got RB2 to be considered. And also there is a VB that we need. And that VB can be calculated from VE plus what? Plus VBE. So meaning to say, with this information, it was enough for us to calculate the value of RB, RB1. All right, so let's take this into our information. So that is 3.15. So our RB1 is going to be given from the formula, as we saw, that is RB2 into uh, VCC minus vb over what over vb but we need the value of vb from where 
the combination of the two because we are not given the VB from our information that we are not given. If you are given, then you just use the one that you are given there. So from our calculation, we saw that from our formula VB is calculated from VE plus VBE, where we calculated uh, VE. So we're just going to substitute the 1,4 and the VBE that we are given in our information of 0, 0,7 volts. So that was going to be uh, the value of VB, which is 2,1 volts. With this value, substitute it to obtain the value of RB1 together with the RB2 that we calculated before. So RB2, 3,920 into VCC, which is given 14. The VB, we calculated this and we got 2,1. Everything over what? The VB again, 2,1 as it is. So that was going to give us uh, RB1, which is another part of the voltage division. And that was going to be 22,213. All right. So that's 22,213,333, like this ohms. You can even divide by 1,000. So it's going to be somewhere there, which is 22,213 kilo ohms. If you can write it that way, it's the one at the same. So questions can be like that where they need you to uh, have the basic understanding of uh, the information that you are uh, given there, the basic understanding. So the other part, it was on the diagrams. Uh, in this case, we just need to work on one of the one or two of the diagrams in this case so that we can see. All right, so I'm just gonna see here. Let's get back uh, to this part. All right, there's another part that I left, guys, that I need. All right, so that was actually to describe each of the following distortions uh, with aid of neat labeled sketches. So we need the nonlinear, the amplitude, uh, the frequency uh, distortion. So remember that distortion, it actually occurs uh, as a result of the differences that can happen in terms of the input and the output. Uh, remember, you will be expecting something on the input or on the output from what you have inserted on the uh, on the input. Then you expect something to be there on your output, but the output therefore tends to differ from what we are expecting. So that can happen uh, in a the first part that we are given, which is the non-linear distortion. As we can see, guys, non linear linear means a straight line so the output is no longer as we expect to be a straight line it is now going to give us a curve instead of us having a straight line as you are expecting if you input a dc which is a straight line you have a dc which is a straight line if it is consider that you have got ac let us have it as it is if it is just a linear function let it be a linear not to say we are going to have a curve so that is non-linear not linear the other part that you can have as part of your distortion is the part of the amplitude distortion, which is the amplitude is being cut off. Remember, amplitude, I took off the maximum value. So here we are supposed to have a normal curve like this. We are supposed to have a normal curve on top, but that part has been cut off. This part here will be cut off on your, on your amplitude. So that is the amplitude uh, distortion. Then the other part that you are going to have is that one of the frequency, which is uh, this one, the frequency distortion when the frequency is being affected. So that will be now considering uh, the low frequencies, high frequencies, and in between, you consider the frequency band. The, the difference, the frequencies has changed. So now we consider, say, we can now have in between a minimum and a maximum. It is affected the frequencies the way that it was supposed to be. So distortion is simply affecting the exact output that we expect to be having from the input. There's something that we expect, but it will be, be presented in another way. 